Hello and welcome. Today we will be looking at the problem of architectural design concept, especially for young architectural students that are just designing for the first time. You see, architectural design concept is meant in architectural presentations to show the working processes of how you achieved your design solution. So you don't just jump from analysis, case studies, straight into your site plan and design solution. If you make such kind of presentation, which majority of students in architecture try to do these days, you miss a very crucial part of your design process, which is how did you arrive at the design solution? How? I don't know. So if I start a design and I'm looking at, for example, a recreational center like we're doing this semester, and I finish my research, my case studies, the spaces I'm studying, and I just jump on my site analysis straight into floor plan, site plan, elevation and section. How will I end the full acts? How will I convince the jurors that I know what I'm doing? You must convince me. It's through this section of design called design concept or concept development. So we'll be addressing how to go about design concept, how to tie your ideas together and how to present it. So sit back with us and let's enjoy the video. The first thing you want to do when you get to your design concept stage is to ask yourself this critical question. What do I know about this project? I've listed some very important things you should know about your project on the board. So let's take a look. The first thing is the key spaces. You should ask yourself, what are the key spaces in this project? So let's say for our project, we are designing the recreational center. We have the indoor games for kids, the physical games, digital games, the outdoor sports set areas. So you need to classify the key spaces. You need to also classify the ancillary spaces. This is classified information. You need to also know the sizes of equipment there. So before you get to your design concept, you should have sorted out everything about the major spaces in your design. You should have also sorted out everything about the ancillary spaces in your design. The next thing is the users. You need to understand who your users are. Here we're talking about kids are the major users of the recreational space followed by their parents who will be bringing them to the place, and then the staff. You need to provide and understand the species they need, each of these different users. Next, we have site requirements and cost rates. You need to understand the site where your building has been located. You need to be at peace with the site. You need to have studied it, the access, the views from the site. All these are information that you should get prior to developing a design cost. And then you should understand the constraints of your brief, the constraints of uh, the environment you are in, cost, technology, material. You should also have all these ideas in generating in your head before generating a concept. The rest is understand the brief. Sometimes when people are generating concepts or design ideas or solutions, they get it into their head that we just want to be great architects and showcase themselves. And in so doing, forget everything about the brief and what the brief requires of them. So you must always try to study your brief over and over again, get a clear mental picture of it prior to developing a design concept. I find that you should study other successful designs. So you should have done a lot of case studies of good, successful designs. Case studies are important, but only when you deal with the right project. If you have known all these things, the, first, the next thing is to go to the other side of the, what do you know, what problems are you solving? So once we are done with the areas, so once we are done with what we know, the next thing you ask yourself, what problems will this design concept solve? Because this is very important aspect of the design concept. You should know exactly what to solve it. When I ask them think of design concepts, what comes to mind is facade design, elevation, you know, iconic buildings that look like bear, tigers, dragons, and stuff like that. A design concept really shows how you solve a design problem. So it just shows the processes, the thoughts that went into developing your design solution. It wasn't the anything about that, right? So what are we looking to solve with our design concept? As with every design, the first thing is zoning. We must make sure that our buildings are zoned properly. So the floor plan is zoned properly. The, the major spaces are zoned properly and the intermediate spaces are zoned there. And when you are talking about zoning, that's where bubble diagram comes in. So bubble diagram is the first thing that you should aim to resolve with your design concept. 
So whenever we start working out our design concept, what it means is that we're already started, we're already working on our bubble diagrams. And the bubble diagrams, we're able to create different zones, you know, the zone for this major space, like the digital game zone, the zone for this, which zones interact more with the other and which zones don't. Sometimes these things don't require any special touch of creativity. It requires enough information, study, and understanding of the design problem and understanding of all our past projects. That will enable you to zone your problem, your buildings, properly. The next thing to consider is user experience and comfort. Now, if you are developing a design concept, you should consider the users. You should know who the users are and you should ensure that your building and spaces are comfortable for them to use. There is no game getting a very wonderful facade in your design and your design is not functional. It doesn't serve the user needs. It doesn't fulfill what it's meant to do. Concept must also consider site design. When you zone spaces within your site, when you look at how vehicular, pedestrian, and um, other movements around your site are planned, the vegetation, the position of the building, you are already developing a design concept. So even before the zoning should be the site design, you should also ensure that your buildings are buildable and that they meet the client needs. Finally, you can now add any innovative inputs you have about the project. You see, the innovative aspect of the project normally comes at the tail end of your design concept because you have solved very little, little problems. You merge them together and then when you are seeing your design solution working, you can now add an innovative input. So most of us actually have design concepts within our design process. Well, for some reason, either we don't present them properly, we don't show them during the design phase, and we job them as something that, you know, we just hide that from the lecturers. After the uh, research, we just jump into the design solution. But they are very, very important. Let's see if we can work this out practically. Okay, so to try the issue of design concept home, there's something I also need to say. You see, while going about creating design solution, the architectural design process should involve some kind of freedom, some kind of play that will allow creativity to come in. You see, if you take this course too seriously, always trying to get the idea, get the answer, and see if the answer is, you know, you just get it and it sticks. Mm -hmm. You won't be creative, you will find it difficult, and you will be discarding ideas that come to your head. So when trying to get a design concept or a design solution or various aspects of your design concept, try and be free of spirit. Try to be a little bit playful. Don't take it too serious. If an idea comes to mind and you implement it, it doesn't stop you from testing other ideas and then testing it over and over again to ensure that, you know, we are making something that is worthwhile, that is reasonable, that is good. So let's go with our reflection and how we are designing for 200 levels to that. Uh, let's see, we'll start with the first thing here, which is zoning. So in talking about design concept, let's look at zoning. Let me see for zoning, what, what am I uh, looking to solve? I'll solve the problem of zoning. I need to zone my site. I need to zone my building. So let's start with the site. What are the major things I need to zone in the site? I have like three. So I have parking. I have building. I have outdoor parts. You also have events parts. I have four major spaces I need to zone. So I have the main building, I have parking, I have areas of pedestrian, and I have outdoor courts I need to zone. I need to now know which spaces interact with which more and which spaces will not have any direct interaction with the other. So the parking should not have a direct relationship with pedestrian so that I can avoid Accidents. If I have my parking and my pedestrians together, especially if they are kids, it's going to cause me issues. I necessarily may not need to merge the parking directly with the building. People can park at the point and walk because it's a play area. Look, it's not a building where you call and then you have drop offs and front because a lot of people are only in and out. I prefer the pedestrian to have a direct connection with the building. My thought process is knowledge. I'm still thinking about it. Even as I'm making the sketches, I'm thinking, okay, uh, 
history does not solve the whole problem. It doesn't just come once. I want to keep packing away, but I can just go and okay, this is the final sketch. I'm going to show this uh, on design day. So I, I, I have to refine this more and more. So for the zoning, I'll type and I'll make a sketch to see if I can refine what I'm proposing. So let's say I'll have parking here. Yeah? And then beside the parking, I can have that area of pedestal. And then possibly will have a space of building. Uh, the very long half of site goes are not to go to the, the play courts yet, or I have to indicate the courts yet. So, you see, this is me really time to solve the design problem, but I don't have the solution yet. So, in design concepts, you keep a lot of stacks of paper because you keep sketching, you keep uh, going back and forth with it and seeing if it works. When you finish with your site zoning and it works, and you feel like, okay, this is getting close to what could be. You might also be thinking, before you finish the site zone, you also be thinking about the shape of your site and trying to replicate this on the site with an idea of how the square area of the site is and you know, stuff like that. I might not be able to go into the details, but I'm not sure you how uh, your brain might be functioning during this period. The next thing is that you zoom in also for the site. So, once you know the solid, I meant to see the solid for the building. Now, once you know that um, the key space, once you have go to the key space in the outside, then that zone is in the key space. So, all that major key space. In many designs, the key spaces, there will be three, maybe four, maybe five, but they might just be it's sharp. Even if you are designing a 20 square building, your key spaces are not that much because many of the buildings we design, even when they are uh, start together, uh, the key spaces within those designs are mostly not that much. Maybe theaters and hospital, not the station. Uh, in this uh, design for the recreational center, uh, the key spaces are those areas when children, they are, you can keep those areas and then uh, the auxiliary spaces are the support spaces are covering. So, so, I also like this place is where the arcade games, where the physical games, what other games? Uh, in between, uh, there might be other games, some other games, where the outdoor courts that we might design outside. Um, we have some support facilities here and there. I can't remember the whole place now. But in Zoom, most times, uh, you, you have different arms or different ways to solve. So, you got two videos on where people call it. We the first place, get into a bigger space, get into a bigger space, you know, this type of media approach. We can have some kind of radial zone area. So, what I just think is linear approach to zone area. I don't know if my audio picked up what I was saying there, but you can arrange your zone in a linear way. You can make it radial, you can make it uh, maybe. Let's kind of, let me say, as a center point, like maybe cross or stuff like that. It's glad for you. So let, let me just say for my own zoning, uh, I'm going to use something like a uh, T shape. So, so let me, I'll look at that. If we are like eight here. So I'm writing a small, I'm writing a small labels. I like eight here. We have our eight house gallery there. Or we have uh, the big, there are on physical being here. Yeah. And then we we'll have other support facilities here. Yeah. So um basically I'm just thinking around with what we call bubble diagram. I'm also thinking around with what uh the shape of my floor plan that's called to be at the end of the day. These things are not the final thing, but they are getting me closer because I'm using the information that I have to try to solve problems that are there. I'm keeping all these different sheets of paper, I'm stacking them up, and I'm trying to make sense of how my mind is processing uh, this code. As I'm designing all these things, I'm thinking about user comfort. So when user comfort comes into Zone, uh, we're looking at the spaces where uh, people can go to um, ease themselves, like the toilets, the restaurants, the stairs, you know, 
other elements within the design that will enable your design to just be wonderful. Uh, um, I'm not basically talking about aesthetics right now, but just all these other elements you can put into your design. And uh, when you've done the zoning, you can now be, you use the zoning as the basis to make the design more comfortable, even before the floor plan. So you are thinking to yourself, I'll choose it the fall or layout from zoning is the better place of all design. No matter what you're designing it, it's like, there are just uh, not so many ways we can arrange our spaces. You either have corridors linking your spaces, you have a center core linking your spaces, you have a corridor with different corridors linking your spaces. We, you know, what we design as architects, if you go to it and study it in-depthly, it's not that complex. And human beings, they don't want to be living very confusing or complex spaces. We want simple, straight, easy to find spaces within our buildings. So when you are designing, keep this in mind. It's not, uh, you're not reinventing the wheel from beginning most times. So, so I'm looking at this all. I'm thinking, okay, in case you are all for this certified support spaces, uh, maybe this is where I like the kids toilet. it. This is uh, also where I'm at the gate salt stairs. My, I also think of things like fire escaping this uh, time. I might be looking at them. Um, I, look, I might be looking at fire escape. I might be looking at them. Um, back door activities. All these things that come. So, well, when we're done with zoning, now when we're done with zoning that side this time, we can now start picking up a uh, beautiful aspect of that. Now, when I'm talking about the beautiful aspect of building now, we are developing the form. We are trying to imagine what this could look like. So, uh, let's see. Best thing to do at this point in time is begin to sketch an isometric view or 3D view but isometric is it. So, that is it. I was largely by being here. So the salt there of this salt. I'm learning my building to be a T-shaped unit. And then what kind of materials, what forms, what imagery, what what can I call it? It's a plate junior. The building should always so formal they shouldn't then do some fall things. So I think it to myself, if I could, I like to do maybe elements like this, I can form a shape what really that can make the duty more inviting. This is where uh we tell the client needs and you know, we teach inputs calling. And these are not casters done. You need to keep walking and re walking, testing the ideas, sketching, uh allowing your creativity to flow through your hands. The only thing it is to jump into the system because sometimes you might have some ideas that you can't even what they're right now because you're not a specialty with any software. So you need to be careful with it. So I also try to put some of these ideas and design process wise in slow application. I might not be doing everything to the highest quality because you know, I'm just thinking on my feet as I start. So, but I'm hoping that this can help somebody trying to go through the process of design, uh, concept development to create something wonderful. If you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching to this point. Leave a like, uh, you can share. And um, if you want to support me and the lectures and everything I'm doing, I'll leave a link here uh, on my seller account where you can make any support you wish. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Peace out. Well.